Okay. So you type this in, of course. Anytime you, you get an equation, type it in. Don't mind this one here that I have there, okay? So you just type that in. Hit graph. You quickly realize your window isn't quite right. So you just go like, this is pointing up. Right, you make a note, this is pointing up. And it's a wider curve, so I'm, I'm assuming it's going like this. So I'm going to adjust my x max first and foremost. I'm going to go 50. Hit graph. Overkill, right? But that's okay. 25 would probably do, yeah. And then I need to adjust my y min. I'm going to go negative 50. It's probably not good enough, right? But let's try it. Not quite, almost. So I keep adjusting till I see all the intercepts and the vertex. So that's that's a pretty good window there. And so we're going to find the vertex. It's a min, right? So second trace minimum. So I press 3. You want to go to the left of it. Anywhere to the left is fine, by the way. I want to emphasize that even if you go way out here, it's to the left of it. And then you, you jump lines if you... No, you can't do that. Never mind. Don't do jumping lines on this one. You can't do that. You got to stay on that curve. You go somewhere to the right. So now you're telling the calculator, I know it's between here and here, and I will find it. And so that is, so for A, let's see if I can fit that in here. That would be 3.56, negative 55.08. If you have that, you would get the marks today. Uh, but I would say second trace... Three or min would be something that I would be looking for. Otherwise, you get a K error for keys missing. Okay, so that'd be a half a mark off. The Y intercept, this isn't general form. That's why I just gave you uh, half a mark for it because you just stated, right? Straight from the general form, boom. But you could use your calculator, sure, why not? X intercepts, I'm going to say this uh, Y2 is equal to zero and then just second trace five, okay? And so we go second trace five, go to the leftmost. That's good enough, that's close enough, by the way. Enter, enter, enter. And so that's negative, let me see here, negative 8.17, zero. Anybody encountered the weird e to the negative already at all while you did your homework? It, it will happen, so make sure you see. You should know, based on what it tells you on the screen, that y is equal to 0, no matter what shows up here. Like if you get like a 5.71, just keep looking. It'll, it'll say e to the negative 15 or something, right? It is 0. So uh, here, 15.8. Uh, 30, right? That rounds to 30 because it's 296, right? So you get one mark for each uh, correct x intercept there. What is the domain and range? My domain, so this is how you actually, I don't know if I was, so if you're missing the D, that's fine today, but you could say squiggly brackets and then it's all reals. Or you could use this notation, which is called the interval notation. That's fine. That'd be half a mark. And this one is a full mark. Uh, why? Because it's pointing up, it's greater than or equal to the y value of the vertex. So I got to go up here and, and use that negative 55.08. Whatever you got for your y value here, I would honor it here. Okay. Or you can say... Uh, negative 55.08 all the way to positive infinity round bracket square bracket square bracket means it's included right so those are the y values that are allowed either one is fine uh, in intro to applied and pre-cal i don't think they stress the squiggly brackets i think they tell you this is okay but in applied the province takes marks off if the squiggly brackets are missing, okay? 
so when I teach intro to apply and pre-cal, I actually warn my students as I like, that just put them down because you can't go wrong with that even in pre-cal. Okay, so one and a half, so half for domain and a full mark for the range. Okay, it has to be exactly like this. Uh, I would take off half a mark if the squiggly brackets are missing, but I would take a full mark off if the if the symbol is wrong, right? The inequality has to be pointing the right way. And now the fun part, which is the graphing part. So yes, use your calculator to help you out. So I noticed there's a bit more of a focus on quadrant. What is this one again? Four, right? One, two, three, four, remember? So there's a bit more here. Definitely three and four is where the action is happening. So I'm kind of going to replicate that. something like that and I'm going to make it work for me and I look at my x-intercepts here negative 8 15 okay so let's see here I might have to extend this a bit so if I go 2 4 6 8 10 so this would be negative 10 and I'm going to use the same scale 2 4 6 8, 10, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, right? So I'm using a, a consistent scale. I'm going to use X there. And um, my vertex is at 3.56, negative 55, right? Sorry, you can't see that, right? So I need to go all the way down to negative 55 and make sure the y-intercept is also included. So I'm going to use a different scale here. Let's see, 10, 20, 30, 40. It's a bit too much. So I'm going to go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So that's my negative 50 line. And I just keep going. And you're like, what about all the numbers in between? I'm OK you skipping that, but I do check. right? I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to get to 10 here. One, two, three, four, five to get to 10 here. So you're going up by twos. Doesn't matter what you picked, right? You went up by one, you went up by five, as long as you're consistent, right? And so this would be a 10 up here, technically, and that's the y-axis. So taking care of the scale is very important. And let's plot. Um, let's do vertex first. So two, four, so 3.56 is somewhere in here. And I'm going to go uh, negative 55. That'd be right about there. That's my vertex. That's my y-intercept. 15, uh, so 12, 14, 15 is somewhere in here. Negative 8, I'm here somewhere. Right. So you've got your points there. And then just go like that. Same here. Okay, and then you have your equation. There, so that is all you need for that. That would be three marks. So uh, when I mark this, I look at scale first and foremost. Do you have an, a consistent scale? Okay, if that's wrong at all, that's a minus one. Okay, then I look at intercepts and vertex. Are they where they're supposed to be? And then I would be looking at labels. What else did I tell you? So this would be equation, x and y axis, arrows, right? Uh, these are half mark deductions, like the labels and the arrows would be half mark deductions. Scale and intercepts, if they're not where they're supposed to be, would be minus one. Okay. Okay. Not the last time. So if you didn't do so well today, don't uh, don't give up. Right. You're gonna stay focused. You're gonna keep doing this. Uh, so add it up, and you get a mark out of eight. You're the teacher today. So I will kind of just go with what you uh, decide.